Welcome to video three in this series about how to do more with Jamboard. It has been fascinating to see all of the ideas and the excitement everyone's been leaving in the comments. And I'm so excited to share this third video about how to use this great free tool in your classroom. My name is Matt Miller. I taught in public schools for more than 10 years. And since then, I've dedicated my life to supporting and equipping teachers. I've done that through my Ditch That Textbook website, five books, and presentations and workshops all over the world, as well as social media. We have covered a lot in these first two videos in this series. In the first video, we learned that Jamboard is more than just an expensive interactive display. It's a free app for brainstorming and visual thinking that helps us create interactive learning experiences for our students. It looks a little bit like Google Slides, but it's built to be used in the moment to get ideas flowing quickly and capture them for later. In the second video, we talked about my top three favorite ways to use Jamboard. It can be used as a digital whiteboard for visualizing learning over a video call or even on a projector in a face-to-face -face classroom. It can be used to create interactive learning experiences where students drag and drop, insert images, draw, and more. It can even be used for students to show what they know. Give them a blank Jamboard and they can create a visual representation of what they've learned, helping us to see how their brains perceive new content. If you haven't, I really encourage you to go back and watch those first two videos. They're not that long and they are full of ideas. In today's video, I wanna show you a workflow for setting up Jamboard so that your students can succeed with it. I'm gonna talk about how to create a Jamboard template in three easy steps. You can use this process to create a clear, effective, engaging activity for your students on Jamboard so that it's ready to go as soon as they open it up. When I say Jamboard template, I'm not talking about anything you'll find in an official template section in Jamboard or Google. What I'm talking about is a Jamboard file that you create. You set up an activity in it that your students can do, getting it all ready for them to use. And then you're going to share that template with the students. When they get their own copy of it, they can open up that template and get to work, adding text, dragging shapes, inserting images, and even more. It makes for great interactive learning activities. So how do you make these templates? As I said earlier, it can be done in three simple steps. And the more familiar you get with these steps, the easier it is to create these activities. Now, before we start, we have to picture in our mind what the activity will look like. Are there spaces where students will type? Is there an image where they're going to label it or annotate it? If you need to, sketch it out briefly on a sheet of paper. The more of these that I create, the easier it is for me to envision the activity in my mind so I don't have to sketch it out first. Now, once you have an idea of what it's gonna look like, ask yourself this question. What parts of the activity do my students interact with? And what parts do I wanna lock into place so that students can't edit them? Think of a traditional worksheet that you would copy on the photocopier. The part that comes out of the photocopier is the part that's locked in place. Students can't change, edit, or move those parts around. But the parts where students write, those are the interactive parts. And thankfully with Jamboard, we can do way more interactive hands-on learning than we can with just a paper worksheet. So now that we know what our activity will look like, let's get into those three steps. Step one is to create those parts that students can't edit. Think of this as the framework or the foundation for your Jamboard activity. This can include a title and some instructions. It can include a box where you want students to type something. It can include labels or numbers or anything else that you wanna set in place that isn't supposed to be moved around. Now we're gonna take all of these elements and save them as an image. And we're gonna make that image the background image for our Jamboard activity. See, when we save all of these items as a background image, it locks them in place so students can't accidentally or not so accidentally delete them or change them. My favorite way to create that background image is in Google Slides. When you create a new Google slide presentation, the dimensions of the slide fit very nicely with the size of a frame in Jamboard. And on this slide, you're gonna add everything that you want students to see, but not edit. Now, once you're finished, 
go to File, Download As, and pick PNG Image. That'll take all of the items and save them as one image file. Now once you do that, head back over to your Jamboard file. Click Background and choose the button for a custom background image. That's where you can add your background image. And look, once it's in place, you can't move any of these items around in the background. That's it. You're done with step one. Step two is to add the parts of the activity that you want your students to edit. The interactive parts. The first interactive part that probably comes to mind is text. You know, you can certainly add text boxes to a Jamboard activity where students can type text. But that's just scratching the surface of what they can do. You can add shapes that students can drag into place. You can even set the background color of the shape as transparent, creating a circle or a box that they can use to just highlight a certain part of that Jamboard frame. You can add images that students can drag into place. Students can even add their own images, including pictures shot immediately from their webcams. Set everything up just as you want students to find it in your Jamboard activity. And when you're done with that, you're ready for step three. Step three is to share the Jamboard activity with your students. Now, the bad news, sadly, it's not as easy as just copying that link out of the top of your web browser and just sharing it with your students. But the good news, the right way to share a Jamboard activity isn't much harder or more time consuming than that. If you're using Google Classroom, just create a new assignment and attach your Jamboard activity to it. If you want each student to get their own copy they can work on, then just change the little sharing dropdown to make a copy for each student. Then assign the assignment. If you're using something else like another learning management system that doesn't look like this, you know, something like Canvas or Schoology or Blackboard, it's almost just as easy. Click the share button in Jamboard and click the sharing settings and change it to anyone with the link can view. Copy the link. When you go to paste the link somewhere to share it with your students, make one small change. In the link, delete out the word edit and everything that comes after it. Then add the word copy. By making this little change, whenever your students click on that link, they're gonna be prompted to make their own copy of the Jamboard template. Then they can get right to work. And when they finish, they can just submit the link to you. Let's review those steps one more time. Step one is to create a background image with everything you don't want your students to edit. That background image will lock everything into place so that students can't change it or delete it. Step two is to add all of the interactive parts of the Jamboard activity you do want your students to edit. And then step three is to share that Jamboard activity with your students through an assignment or through a link. Now that you know those three steps, you're able to create great learning experiences for your students using Jamboard. Those experiences can be as simple as adding a sticky note here or there, or as intricate and complex as jams with lots of frames and lots of moving pieces. You have all of the control and you can create exactly what your students need. Now, if you've been enjoying all of these ideas in this video series, then you won't want to miss the final video. This video is for you if you want to learn how to do more with Jamboard to make the most of it for you and your students. And plus, there's a special part of this last video that is time sensitive. So don't wait too long before watching it. In the meantime, I'd love to hear from you. After watching today's video, what could you make templates about using Jamboard? Tell us about it in a comment below. And if you've already made some templates, tell us about that in the comments. And bonus points if you can include a link so that we can see your template and make a copy of it ourselves. I'll be keeping an eye on the comments, so I hope to see you there, and I hope to see you in our next video.